Hey everybody and welcome to episode 2 of Render Review. Thanks for everybody who's subscribed and hit the notification icon, that really helps me out. And a huge thank you to everyone who is either a patron or a member of this channel. Your names are going to be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. Now I'm sorting as new. This is not in order of preference or anything like that. So the first one we have is from Carl CG. And this is frankly a pretty awesome render. I would be thoroughly pleased with this if I were you. You've obviously put a lot of time and effort matching the character to the background. You've got some really nice solid lighting here. I'm really quite um, impressed by this one. What you could do, <laughs> and these are the caveats, not at all. This is an amazing render. I'm just going to offer you some tips on what I would personally do. What I think would look quite cool is if you had like a pink fringe light around the edge of the head and this back shoulder. So, because you've got a strong light source here anyway, so you could stick a ghost light in there, color it purple, just so that it gives you a bit of a pink fringe around here to make it look like some of these pink lights are casting um, light onto her, because at the moment the white is a lot brighter than the pink, but that's not a criticism so much as just kind of a personal preference thing, like this is a, a great render. Now you had a question regarding this hair here and you said that it looked kind of wiry and I do see what you mean. Um, Subdividing is probably not going to be the way to go on this one because all it will do is make these look less angular but the, the hair is still going to be there, it's still going to be standing out, it's still going to look kind of bonkers. Um, personally what I would do is in Photoshop just cut this out, go across the shoulder, across the strap there all the way up this edge here and then you can see here where there's a background bit of hair there start cutting across there and then up there and then it'll look like these hairs are wrapping around the back like because they're wet rather than standing out here that's if you decide to remove them at all but I mean again it's personal preference the hair's hanging really well over the um, the shoulder on the other side and the outfit so you don't need to mess around with that side but yeah personally I would just chop these out using the patch tool you've got plenty of color surrounding it and it's nicely blurred so you could easily cut that out without any problems but yeah you've done a really nice job of that one my friend so congratulations and well done on that one so the next image is from Angry Legacy and this is a kind of a concept of some characters um, I mean, I can't really comment on the actual characters themselves because I don't know anything about them, but I can kind of comment on the render itself. So you'll notice the guy here is levitating off the floor a little bit. So you can try when you've got the um, scene open in Daz Studio, you can try pressing Control and D and that should drop him down so that he's the lowest point of this mesh is touching the floor. And if that doesn't work, just drag him down manually until his feet sink into the floor a little bit because that's quite a, you know, it's, to me looking at it, it's noticeable. The pose itself that he's doing isn't too bad. His thumb's making good contact with his skin up here, so that's cool and there's no clipping on the hair. In these short hairstyles, it can be quite a challenge to get these to look proper because the skull cap has actually got hair on it. Overall the lighting on the whole scene is pretty good, it's nice and soft, it's effective. Overall I would say the only thing I would focus on now, you've got the lighting and all of that kind of thing down, is concentrate on the posing of the characters and the position. Now this one's making mostly good contact with the floor but again maybe drop this foot down. This one seems to be on the floor but this one seems to be hovering slightly. The lady behind her is making good contact with the floor. Um, and then just practice your posing, trying to get the poses looking natural and trying to get the, the, the problem that you have, um, not you as an individual, but in, in the studio in general, is that it's very easy to make the poses look 
like you've got action figures and you've just roughly posed them so spend a little bit more time just fine tuning those poses and just concentrating on these kind of joint positions because to me that leg looks just a little bit too far apart it's, it's too exaggerated for want of a better way of putting it subtlety is key my friend but overall the render is really good quality just focus on those poses a little bit and you'll be good to go my friend this next render is from full beard will riker <laughs> appropriately named for the image and this is i believe the second attempt at rendering this based on advice given from other users and again most of the advice that i've read people giving you is is personal preferences what they would do if it were them that doesn't necessarily mean that they're right or wrong or that you were right or wrong so just keep that in mind when you're taking advice from anybody including me overall i'd say the lighting is pretty good you've got good contrast on the these two models the lady in the blue and the lady in the red have got good contrast on them but the lady in the back it looks like you've tried to soften the lighting on her up a bit too much and it's created this weird she doesn't look like she's in the same scene as the other two almost but that's a fairly minor complaint can't really see if they're making contact with any of the surfaces on other than this one at the floor where the heels digging in ever so slightly if you look so that might be something that you want to think about in your posing but yeah, you've sort of done a good job of concealing the hands and feet from the view of the camera. So anybody looking wouldn't be able to tell whether or not they are. So a couple of people have commented about D-Force on the clothing. These clothes are, it's tricky. It is tricky. It depends on the theme of the render, whether you're creating a adult visual novel or just a standard render for rendering sake yes it is generally nice to see the clothes hang more naturally but on a skin type bodysuit like this naturally is a relative term in the tv show these clothes were actually quite baggy they weren't skin tight so well they were on the men they were skin tight but on the women they kind of hung a bit more naturally under the breasts and around the bottom so yeah that's a matter of personal preference but overall i would just look at fixing the contrast a little bit you don't have to see everything in the scene lifting the shadows for a bit of detail is great but if it gets to the point where you're taking the contrast out of the image i would say just take a step back look at it is it really crucial for there to be a light under here so that you can see this character's breast again personal preference my friend either way very good render the next render is from Angry Legacy user, and he's got a character in a cave. So what we've got here is decent contact with the floor. That's good. And reasonable contact with this rock as well. With uneven surfaces like that, it's always a bit difficult because you kind of, it's hard to picture it unless you've got someone actually sitting on a rock in front of you, how they would be kind of lifting the weight or bearing the weight with their hands. And um, the expression's nice. She's looking very warm and friendly. The lighting is overall, is quite good. Perhaps if I was to make any adjustments to this image, my first adjustment would be to be to put a little bit of depth of field in there so that the background is slightly blurred. I know that it's a very pretty background and you want to show it off, but you can blur it slightly without losing any of that detail. And then obviously that would help a little bit with this floor texture here, because this sand texture that's on the ground is a bit, I don't want to say low res, it looks, it doesn't look, it looks wrong. So yeah, maybe if you can find a better sand texture that might work. Yeah, this one just looks, it looks great in the background over there where it's far away from the camera, but close up here, this texture looks, looks a bit kind of odd to me. Yeah, so you know, depth of field, and yeah this texture but other than that it's a really nice render really nicely lit the character doesn't look too shiny she looks like you know she's maybe wearing some sunscreen or something but not like offensively so yeah really good well done and our last render is from one of our regular sensi and this one is two arches so overall this is a solid image this arrow's position or the lighting on the arrow it kind of makes it look like the arrow is still in the bow, which might be what you were going for, but it looks, to me, it just, this position looks slightly off. It looks like she's aiming up and over here with the bow, 
rather than at this young lady. It might just be the camera angle though. So just to be clear, I'm not criticizing. <laughs> just saying the camera angle and the way that the bow is aimed, it doesn't look like she's aiming at this person. It's a tricky one. The background texture on the floor, you would be able to get away with this if the fireplace were more blurred because you'd be able to say it was depth of field. But because the fireplace is much more in focus than the surface of the floor that they're standing on, it just looks a little bit wrong. Maybe find a higher res texture for the ground or change the tiling properties and the UV settings in the surface just to bring that a little bit more into focus so that it matches with the fireplace a little bit more. General poses and everything is good. The lighting is nice. It's, you know, it's not too dark. I think you could still get away with bringing it in a little bit brighter. Depends on whether, whether you're having this as an indoor scene or an outdoor scene or if the fireplace is being used as a light source or anything like that. But yeah, really, honestly, my only two criticisms are that the, the floor texture is a bit too blurred and that this, the posing of the arm and the bow and the arrow just looks a little bit off to me. But other than that, it's a really solid render, my friend. Again, should be very proud of that. Well done. So that wraps it up for this week's episode of Render Review. Thank you ever so much to everyone who submitted. I hope the tips that I've given are of some use to you. These are just my opinions, so don't get too down if I've said something that you maybe don't disagree with. So yeah, keep those renders coming in, guys. Get on the subreddit, make your submissions, put in square brackets YouTube in the title so that I know that that's what you're doing. And let me know what you think in the comments below. See you soon. Bye-bye.